Okay, so in mathematics, especially in algebra, we use a lot of symbols. And uh, sometimes when you learn this notation, it can be first, you know, uh, intimidating because it's a new language, if you will. So when we learn a symbol or a particular mathematical notation, uh, we're like, okay, I got that, I understand it. But what happens when we use the same symbol and it has different meanings? So it can be a little confusing, but this is no different than, let's say, the English language when you learn a particular word, okay, or verb, and you can have different meanings, okay? Well, in mathematics, same thing here, and I'm going to show you an example where we're using these little bars right here, okay, around this number. This has a particular meaning. Now, uh, typically, you'll learn this in, like, middle school, maybe, like, pre-algebra, and then as you continue to learn more mathematics, maybe into, like, algebra 2, uh, you'll use these same bars, but you'll use it in this way, and this means something completely different than this. So you're like, okay, wait, what's going on here? Of course, <laughs> we still need to know what this means here. And then as you continue on even further in your math education, maybe into like, say, Algebra 2 Trigonometry, uh, maybe College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, certainly, you'll use these same bars around something like this, and this means even something different, okay? So indeed, we could be using this uh, the same symbol but it will have different meaning in mathematics. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these three examples. Uh, I'm sure there's other uh, notation uh, that you'll encounter, uh, but these ones here in particular kind of come to mind just to you know, make the point again. In mathematics, you gotta be paying attention because you know, if you're like, oh, I understand what to do here, uh, and when I see these bars you know, around this thing, it means do what I do over here. No, it does not. Okay, so this isn't that difficult, by the way. And I'm going to go through and explain each one of these little guys in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. Uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, uh, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about uh, about a week or so. And uh, in pre-calculus, I get a lot into this kind of stuff. But uh, I also have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, um, GRE, GMAT, Oh my gosh, there's so many courses out there. AccuPlacer, or, uh, or test rather, um, Alex exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, and there's countless other exams that people have to take for all sorts of reasons, whether you want to get into graduate school, whether you're trying to get into a particular placement into a college class, maybe you're trying to become a certified teacher, maybe you're trying to get into nursing school. Uh, you have to take these exams. They're very important, and they all have math on them. Okay, so if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on these exams. So let me help you prepare. Just go to my website and uh, check out my full course catalog. If I do not have your exam, uh, drop me a line in my contact form. I will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously, help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to be great at math or just pass your math course, then you got to be serious about taking excellent math notes. Uh, so I've been teaching math for decades, and one thing is apparent to me, those students who take excellent notes almost always do very, very well. You know, think about it. How could you, you know, know that uh, what's going on with this particular symbol and all the other symbology and notation you learn in mathematics um, if you're not taking notes or paying attention? Okay, this stuff snowballs. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff you're going to be learning. Okay, so maybe in the beginning, you're like, okay, I don't need to take notes because I understand. But as you, you learn more and more math, it gets out of control. So you got to take great math notes. And um, if, uh, you know, if you don't, okay, well, then, you know, you're going to end up with grades looking like this. And, you know, there's no need for that. Okay, you can, everyone is capable of getting at least an A. Uh, at least that's what I believe. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving your notes, you can use my notes to study. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's talk about these symbols. And, you know, the whole point of this video is to kind of reinforce that mathematics is a language. Okay, it's no different than learning English, Spanish, whatever the case is. Uh, it truly is a language, okay? So we're going to go through each one of these guys. Uh, I'm not going to turn this into a full lesson. But uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you, 
Okay. What do you think this is? All right now, hopefully, um, if you are in any kind of uh, uh, math course from pre-algebra and beyond, okay, you should know what this is. And if you said, oh, isn't this the absolute value? Well, you are right. Matter of fact, I'll give you a little bit of a, a smiley face and a check mark. This is the absolute value. Now, what does the absolute value mean, though? Okay, well, the absolute value, most of you, first of all, let's just get the answer here. What's the absolute value? Negative three. Well, let's do this over here. All right, just a quick crash course. Absolute value negative three is three. Now, probably, oh, I don't know, 70% of the students out there think that the absolute value means take this, whatever, if it's a negative number, just give me the positive version of of that uh, value. Well, this is what we call absolute value function. But really what it's asking us to do is uh, tell us the distance a number is from uh, negative three, okay, from zero, all right? The distance uh, a number is from zero is the definition of absolute value, okay? So how far is three from zero? Well, it's three units. We measure distance uh, in positive um, um, units, okay? So like you look at your tape measure, or ruler, or if you're measuring something with a tape measure, you don't see negative numbers here, okay? So uh, distance or displacement is positive. So three is three, uh, three from zero is three units, and negative three from zero, if you were to take our tape measure, is also three units away from zero. So that's the definition of uh, this symbol, okay, when we use it around a number, that's the absolute value, okay? Now, if you didn't understand, if you actually knew this, okay, I'm pretty sure you remember this to some degree, hopefully, but if you knew this right off the bat, you're like, okay, the absolute value is a distance of numbers from zero, then that's excellent. Matter of fact, I'll throw in a couple stars because that's very good, okay? Now, if you just knew the answer, that's good as well, but, you know, we want to know the meaning of this stuff. All right, so uh, we got this down here, the same, this symbol, when we use it around a number, we're talking about absolute value. All right, now, what about this guy right here? What does this mean? Well, this is a whole different deal, okay? This happens to be what we call the determinant, okay? A determinant of a two by two matrix, okay? So you're like, oh my goodness, what's that? Well, a matrix is a way to organize an array, basically organ organize things in a table using um, column rows and columns, okay? So like A, B, C, D, this is a matrix. Okay, so you're definitely going to be studying this um, in algebra, and definitely, certainly in algebra two, intermediate algebra, college algebra. You should have some introduction to it um, in the algebra one level as well. But when we're dealing with matrices, we can do all kinds of stuff with them. You can add them, you can find uh, the inverse of them, potentially, you can um, uh, find the determinant. Okay, so this is what this means, okay? We want to find the determinant of a matrix. Here, let me just write this right here. So we have this uh, matrix, okay? We measure or we define a matrix by its um, dimension. So that's its rows, okay? This is its rows, and this is its columns, all right? So this happens to be, um, we uh, define it by rows and columns. So this is a two by two matrix right here. Now notice this symbol, this little bracket, this is a bracket, okay? It looks kind of like this bar, but it, they're different, okay? When we have this bracket, this is indicating this is a matrix, a two by two matrix to be specific, okay? Now, if I want to find the determinant of this matrix, I need to put the same uh, entries here, 4219, and I put these little bars around it. So this, the, this right here does not mean uh, find the absolute value of this matrix, okay? Now, of course, um, once you learn about the absolute value, you might be saying, oh, they, you know, they want me to find the absolute value of all this stuff. No, it does not mean that. It means find the determinant of this matrix. So, uh, you know, obviously, like, hey, what? Do, well, how do we do this, okay? First of all, what is the determinant of a matrix? Well, when you have a matrix, again, like, let's say, 4, 2, 1, 9, the determinant is just a number, okay? It's a number that is um, associated with every uh, matrix, okay? Every square matrix, uh, to be precise. And uh, it has value to us, okay? But the, uh, the actual value of the determinant really doesn't mean anything particular. So when we're finding the, the determinant of a two by two matrix, it's quite easy. All we need to do is multiply these numbers first, 
So four times nine, if my arithmetic is doing pretty good today, that's 36. And then we're going to subtract it by one times two. And that, of course, is two. So the determinant of this matrix uh, is 34. Okay, so that's the answer of what does that number mean? 34 in and of itself, nothing special, okay? However, we can do things uh, with that uh, value, okay, with the determinant of a matrix to figure out other cool problems. It's extremely important, by the way, to be able to find the determinant of uh, a uh, matrix. Now, a two by two matrix is quite easy. However, I can have all kinds of uh, uh, determinant problems as things that look like this. Let me just uh, do something real quick. Eight, nine, I'm just making stuff up. One, negative six. So here, I'm finding the determinant. I want to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, okay? A matrix that was this, or sorry, here's the matrix, okay? And I want to find the determinant of that matrix, okay? So I would use the notation, these little bars like so. Now, how I do this is uh, much more uh, involved than how I did this problem, okay? So again, you know, when you're thinking about math, all this stuff I talk about note-taking and everything else, if you're watching this video, I'm, I'm assuming you're interested in mathematics and you're likely a student. So, hey, you know, I'm gonna teach you a little bit of math, but I'm also going to uh, really emphasize the things that are gonna make you successful in mathematics, okay? And I know you don't wanna hear, you know, oh, you know, uh, take good notes. Da, da. Nobody wants to hear that kind of, you know, the stuff you gotta do on a daily basis, the hard stuff. Well, unfortunately, it's true. There's no shortcuts. There's just too much stuff to learn in mathematics. You got to be paying attention. Okay, so this is the uh, these little bars right here mean uh, the determinant of a matrix when they're used in this way. But if you knew that, I must give you a bigger smiley face right here. And a uh, matter of fact, I'll give you a uh, two, three. I'll give you three check mark check marks and three stars. That's pretty good. Okay. Now again, if you haven't taken a course where you've learned about matrices, you're going to see this. Okay. So when you do see this, don't confuse this as uh, absolute value. All right. So let's finish up with this last ex uh, little example. All right. So same bars again, but first of all, what is this right here? Okay. You're like, hmm, I don't even know what this is. You're like, what is that? Well, this uh, symbol right here happens to represent a vector, okay, a vector. Like, oh my goodness, what's a vector? Well, a vector is something that represents uh, both magnitude and direction. So for example, let's say here's my lovely little uh, airplane, okay, I'm flying my airplane. That's a terrible wing, all right, man, yeah, it's a little bit better. So here's my airplane, and it's going, let's say, 400 miles per hour. Okay, so this is just magnitude, but vectors uh, represent both magnet, magnitude and direction. So let's say this airplane is going 400 miles per hour on a course of uh, 0, 4, 5 degrees. Okay, so when you have both magnitude and direction, you have what we call a vector, right? Now, this right here is asking us, this bar right here is asking us to find the magnitude of this particular vector. Hmm, interesting. So how do we do that? Well, effectively, you can write vectors in all kinds of different ways. If you don't even know what a vector is, I just gave you a quick 30-second uh, crash course on a vector. But basically, uh, what we can do here is uh, we're saying, okay, this little thing right here, this notation, means our vector is at, it starts at 0, 0, and we go 1 and 1. Uh, just think of this basically as an ordered pair, like a coordinate, x, y point at 1, 1. Okay, so there's the point 1, 1. This is the vector, and our vector is, we represent vectors like, as little arrows, okay? So the tip of that arrow ends at 1, 1. Now, what I want to do is find the length of that vector. That is the magnitude, okay? That represents the magnitude of a vector. Of course, um, you know, you got to study vectors, uh, you know, at a further level. And this is certainly stuff that you're probably going to be doing. And you might do a little bit of an algebra, too, certainly in, like, pre-calculus. And vectors are everywhere. Uh, they're just hugely important. And this is uh, the angle of the vector. In this case, this would be 45 degrees. So how can I find the magnitude of this vector? Well, if this is 1 and this is 1, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So just like a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, this is a little right triangle, 
So this is 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. c squared here, this is actually the magnitude of the vector, the length of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So we're going to get 1 squared, uh, which is 1, plus 1, uh, 1 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 2. Okay, so uh, well, let's just go ahead and do this problem properly. So c squared, c squared is equal to 2. c is equal to the square root of 2. Uh, again, we're only... Uh, talking about a positive value right here. Okay, we're not going to uh, deal with the negative uh, 2, so this is going to be positive. So the magnitude of this particular vector is the square root of 2. Now, if you knew this, okay, I, you know, I'm going to have to change this right here. If you knew that that was the magnitude of the vector, if you knew all of these, then I must give you uh, like an outstanding, crazy 1987 now, 1987 Mohawks were kind of uh, uh, kind of going away, but maybe like 19, no, no, 1985. Yeah, that was a good year for Mohawks. Uh, so, of course, if you never lived in the decades, um, it was a pretty cool uh, decade uh, for sure. And uh, we used uh, um, a lot of hairspray because, uh, you know, people walked around uh, with a lot of Mohawks back in those days. Okay. I didn't. I kind of sported this little flat top type of deal. But anyways... Um, you definitely deserve an A+, plus, a 100%, and I'll give you, let's say, four stars. Now, uh, although vectors is one of those things, you know, I don't think this is overly difficult. I mean, if you understood what I just did here, you know, you understand this meaning, okay? But what's the whole big point of this uh, video? Well, you can have the same symbology, but it will represent different things, okay? So you got to be paying attention to math. It goes back to what I'm talking about here with note taking, how could you possibly, you know, learn all this stuff and all the other stuff you're going to be learning without really being engaged? Okay, so if there was some sort of shortcut about uh, learning mathematics, I would certainly, uh, you know, tell you it. There's uh, little tricks and hacks and stuff, and I try to share a lot of those uh, on my YouTube channel. But, um, anyways, if you found this uh, little video interesting to some small degree, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand math videos, basic to advanced on my channel. So my goal is to try to make math interesting, clear, and understandable, okay? Not boring textbook-like. Look, so many of you out there have to learn math, okay? The bottom line is you're going to have to take a math course, pass it to get to where you want to go in life. Some of you don't like math. Hey, that's okay. But if you have to learn math... Um, Let's try to make it clear and understandable so you can be successful in it. Nobody should be failing math these days, okay? You have to ask yourself, hey, am I doing my part? If I, am I taking great notes, paying attention every day? Am I talking to my teacher? If you're doing those things and you need additional help and you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the material I have on my channel. I'm posting new stuff all the time, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.